Uh, whatever you thought about a grizzly bear, magnify that by like a hundred and it wouldn't even be close. And that's why he ran at me because he's like, oh crap, dad, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Shoot this guy, you know. It's not running anymore. It's flying through the air. Like, <laughs> oh my X God. I character Wolverine <laughs> with his claws like fully wrecked at my face coming right at me like a rocket. And I pull some kind of move straight at my face. I mean, she's like, whoa. Claws wrecked, mouth, uh, yeah. ooh. Ooh. It's like she was coming from my head and I somehow got out of the way by the grace of God. Uh, and he definitely had something to do with it. Yeah. Thank you, God. Yeah, this is Navy SEAL stuff right here, man. We've been, I have good rain gear that is hard to get wet. And I've been soaked to the bone for at least four hours. You should be aware that this video contains life and death struggle between man and beast that has been going on for centuries and generations in Montana through the legacy of the Native American people, those like Tadea Smith, and even to this present day for those who forage the mountains for the wild huckleberry. My business takes a lot of extra effort to get Montana huckleberries and I've known one of these professional pickers named Josh for quite a long, long time, and he's brought us some great berries. He had an insane encounter with a grizzly. As for me, I am a bear lover, and I think Josh is too. And I did give him a bear spray in the hopes that the 44 Meg can be a a backup element but in this situation i'm not sure if that could have been possible while his dog is extremely lovable there may be those who would say that the dog's enthusiastic foraging of the perimeter could have incited a charge every year i like to go huckleberry picking myself so that i can see what these miners of purple gold actually go through and I felt it a privilege to go with one of the best here. You will notice that he uses a picker and that may be controversial too, but this is a real George Shaw picker in the hand of a professional and he doesn't even get many leaves let alone break the bush. So here my friend is this vivid true life drama. And me look what I found. A beautiful, beautiful crimson red bush. My huckleberry pickers go deep into the wilderness to harvest a small portion of what the bears eat. And in the 50 or so years I have dealt with huckleberry pickers, I've heard some amazing encounters with grizzly bears, but this one takes the cake. The dogs ran up on the cub and the mama was coming in hot. Ferociousness coming straight in at me. And, uh, and I must've been standing like right here and when Moose went by me, the bear changed her target. So, and uh, all of a sudden, she's not running anymore, 40 miles an hour. She's in midair, coming at me like this. And I went back, like this right here. I already had my gun out. I went back, and I went back on the ground like this. And I was on my pack. So I, like, laid perfect. And I looked back to trail to see if anything was coming. And there was a little cub standing right there, like 15 feet from oh, where Moose is. Right where Moose is. And uh, the bear almost took off Josh's head. Today's adventure took place in the wilderness near Hungry Horse Reservoir. We've been friends for a good while, so he came to me the night before yesterday to tell me of this crazy incident while he was still buzzing with adrenaline. And then we were going to go back that very night, but we decided to go back yesterday instead at 6 a.m. As the bear was in flight at him, claws extended, mouth open. Here he comes and here we go. Well, here we go back to the site to see what we can find and try to get the berries that Josh has uh, been after. So this is pretty cool, you know, we've known each other a while. We've picked a lot of the same country when we were young, Quintonkin, 
And uh, we're both shooting the same gun, a uh, Ruger Super Blackhawk 44 Meg. His has got a little bit of a longer barrel. If I would have had any other gun, any other caliber, that barrel would have been on me. Yeah. But this gun blew that bear off that road. Isn't that something? The last time you mentioned it, you, go? You, you said that if you had a 10 mm, you'd be dead. Isn't that something? That's, that's, a, that's kind of a jacketed hollow point. And those, those others look like slightly different hollow points. Oh, no, those, those are just lead tip bullets. Yeah. But you shot them with a hollow point, huh? Yeah. Yeah, thank goodness. Man, after hearing how those hollow points blew that bear completely off him, I'm just going to load the whole thing up with hollow points. All right, here we are heading out on this great adventure. Boy, Moose is really in his element up here. He's... He knows where he's going and he ain't scared to go back up there, is he? No, he's not. And many times we've been going through this kind of stuff that he's going through right now. You clock Moose at 27. Yeah, I clock, I clock Moose at 27 right next to the truck or car. And he was probably going faster than that. And she was going a good bit faster than Moose. So you'd guess she was probably booking in at, what, 35 or something? Yeah, that girl was going over the speed limit in this area. Uh, <laughs> but the minute she saw you, it just... She changed her target. The minute she saw me, she leaped. Yeah. Into a murder kill, murder bear. Was she making frothing noises as she was closing in on you, or just... It just sounded like a freight train was coming. Jeez. Uh, it just sounded like... It's hard to... Uh, I don't even know. It was, it was crazy. I mean, it sounded like moose coming through the woods. Only like five of them. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little faster. Hey, boy. Yeah, it's a shame they let all these roads grow back in like this. Well, it is and it isn't. I've had fishing spots that I used to be able to drive right to and now you can't and they're better. Yeah, but they seen, like they seen the bear blaze over me. Yeah, they did. They disappear over the hill. Uh-huh. And, uh, and I must have seen the bear uh, I think that's the only time you've seen a bear. I don't yeah. think you've seen it when it come back up the hill. But John, you know what those are? Do you know your mushrooms? Not real well. I don't either. I, mean, I know a few of them, but... Uh, John, he's from Columbia Falls. I'm really glad he didn't shoot me. Or just open fire in the brush, you know? Yeah. He's seen the bear cut running in, you know? He's seen, he's seen this ferociousness of her. It was, uh, it was insane. Like yeah. I never, never dream of. Because I go around wanting to see bears, you know? Yeah. And try to see a bear. Go out spotlight and try to see a bear. Never see. I've seen one bear this year. I've been camping up here for three months. Some of those smaller wiry grizz are athletic and they're bad medicine, man. She was going over the speed limit. We went in the first day and started to hike up to this bowl. Yeah. And uh, found all these berries right here where this red line is and this little oh, squiggles. Okay. And we never even made it up to the bowl that day. But right That's here, we this is where out. the bear ran up on us. Three days before we were right here, the day we slept that night right there. Right there. From where that bear was. Ooh. 430 yards. Oh, okay. Is where we were at the other day picking. Oh, okay. And then a couple of days later, I mean, we slept right here that night, that morning. The bear uh, thing happened uh, about. But how are, how far are we from where you slept? Uh, about three miles, three oh, and a half miles. About three and a half. Yeah. Okay. But from where we slept, from where the bear was, 600 yards. Oh, just 600 yards. That's where we slept that night. Yeah. With no tents, right next to the fire. Like, uh, <laughs> like the old guys used to do, you know? Right. Well, Josh has been in the mountains all his life. Closer to me. Yeah, that's uh, definitely been a huckleberry eating grizz or black bear. Sketchy kind of looking goalie. 
And uh, this is the biggest, I mean, three times the size of that pile. Wow. The biggest pile of huckleberries dripping off of that log. Jeez. They were running off of that log. Oh, that fresh. So we both looked at each other and we're like, we gotta get the heck out of here right now. It was right in front of us somewhere. We we're still running off the logs. This last Bigfoot recon I did on June 5th. The one up right here? Yeah, we, uh, we came upon a great big huge bear scat and uh, it was, uh, I put my 10 and a half shoe next to it and it was a good bit longer and, and wider. Well, we've been walking a good, I would say close to two and a half miles now. We're just walking up cross country and we're walking up passing some pretty dang good berries, but he thinks it's gonna be a lot better up top. We are walking by stuff like this because it's supposed to be even like... better. So is this the farthest you've been up for a while? <clears throat> I didn't make it this far the other day, no. Oh, okay. Uh, nice. We came through all this. It's a pretty dang good berry. And we have come to the old road. Josh here, he's picking a beautiful purple huckleberry bush. And me, look what I found. A beautiful, beautiful crimson red bush. Here it ever all the way. Well, look at this beautiful view. Where's that? Well, we found one of their water bottles. Yeah, why don't you give me a little play-by-play -play here? So we were we were coming down this road right here, and uh, I said about 50 feet down that way. I said let's shoot above the road because it's open up there. It doesn't look open, but it is. Yeah. And uh, and we got on the road up there and come down through here and the and the the ridge literally peters back out right into the road right here i get right here and i was telling them they're gonna laugh about this and about that time i heard uh my little dog i kind of know their barks you know he's seven months old i heard him and and the other dogs that were with me uh start barking and some kind of growl and uh right shortly after that i heard like a squall growl i can't even explain it it's it was crazy, and that was the mama. The dogs ran up on the cub, and the mama was coming in hot. It's hard to say. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm right here, and I'm like, we're not sure what's going on yet. And all of a sudden, my little dog comes running through here. I mean, like blazing fast. Yeah. And seconds behind him was the other two dogs, and uh, and I hear my my moose boy, the the machine that's running around here all crazy, looking for this bear right now. Uh, all of a sudden, I see him coming through here, uh, like crazy fast. I was, he can go 27. I think he was going faster than that. He was going really fast. And, uh, and he blazes right past me. But before he does, like right behind him, and it was, you couldn't even see. You, I mean, look up through there. Yeah. You can't even see. No, but all I seen was. But there is a little bit of a lane down low. Yeah. Ferociousness coming straight in at me. And uh, and I must have been standing like right here. And when Moose went by me, the bear changed her target. So, and uh, all of a sudden, she's not running anymore, 40 miles an hour. She's in midair coming at me like this. And I went back like this right here. I already had my gun out. I went back and I went back on the ground like this. And I was on my pack. So I like laid perfect and I looked back to trail to see if anything was coming. And there was a little cub standing right there, like 15 feet oh, right where Moose is. Right where Moose is. And, uh, and I, I looked this way cause I heard something coming back at me and I raised my gun up and boom, she was right here by this tree. Yeah. And it blew her out of my sight back over the hill. Uh, she ran over to this tree, and I'm not sure what happened over there. And uh, that's where you heard the. We, we ran up here by that tree up there. It's open up there, and we we took our stand. 
So okay. she was over there when you shot. I thought she was jumping at you when she you, came you out of the hole. Okay. She came back up over the hill, like just as fast as she was coming down the road. She like, like caught a claw and turned around and slingshotted back up that hill and across this. She, her whole body was was like right here. Wow. And I was laying right here. You were laying when you shot. Her. I was laying on my side, wow. on my back, on my side. Crazy. I hadn't, it hadn't, I hadn't even had time to stand up, up yet. Yeah. Like I looked over and I'm like, oh, cute, a baby grizzly bear. <laughs> and then I looked back this way, bang! And if my gun would have been uh, six inches to the left, right, up, down, I wouldn't have hit her. And she would have been, I mean, yeah. She I, was lunging at you. She again. was no, she was tearing my head off. Yeah. Right now. Uh. And then uh, John, he was right back over here, and Melissa was up here, and they were in the thicker stuff. But they seen they seen the bear like flash by when it went over the hill, yeah, and uh, how fast it was moving. And yeah, I hope she picks huckleberries with me again. <laughs> so, uh, and where did you after that? You said you heard some noise, almost like the that bear might have been manhandling its cub or something where did you hear that uh, happen at we uh we all grouped back together right here and uh because we thought she was taking another charge i think she did try to take another charge and she realized i might not be in that good shape anymore so i might want to call this one quits uh so uh she goes there was a bunch of noise over here and it sounded like she was taking a charge and then all of a sudden i heard like what i thought was a dog and uh, the only dog I had seen at that point was Moose because he's still by me. You know, he went right back over the hill after the bear did. Yeah. Like I, I like got up, I stood up and I'm like, I'm like looking for my arm to fall off. And, uh, and Moose like blazed over the hill and went over here and, and, uh, and uh, I heard, that's when I heard the commotion and I'm like, oh crap, our dogs, you know? And I'm like, come on guys. And we all advanced up over here over there scuffling around and and uh weird noises and i mean squalling and breathing hard and and uh and we backed up and got back out of there and uh went back over there on the hill and she came after that she came across the road right here somewhere and about within 40 yards right over in here Dead silence. Uh, about nothing. Not from the cub, mom. Nothing. Where did you see that blood swatch oh, at? Oh, yeah. Like some weird stuff went down right here with that bear and her cub. Like yeah. I said, I don't know if she ate him or what. I was looking for hair. Moose keeps looking up this tree, but... Moose kept looking up the tree, huh? Yeah, but I like... Never could see you. Uh, but you can see where the bear scrimmaged through here. Yeah. All this stuff's all torn up. And she wasn't, she was. This rain probably took care of any blood si signs that there would have been. Yeah, and she went like straight across right here. Because I found blood going across the road over here. 
well, maybe we better go to where where she, you think she was headed, and who knows, we might find the carcass. Yeah. I mean, it could be laying anywhere right here, I guess. But, uh, we went up on the hill after that, over there by that tree, after the silence, you know. Yeah. And then we advanced down here and got on the blood trail for a minute. She went down from over there. She went all the way down over through there, and we followed the blood trail all the way through here. There's some nice berries right over here on this knoll, because that's where we we took a break out there because it was all open. You can even pick. You can even bend over and pick those berries. I think. Where's she at, Moose? Go get her. I think if uh, Moose finds her, he'll bark. Yeah. Even if she's dead. Through this drainage here, there's a little valley over here. Boy, this is all plenty thick, isn't it? It's not like it's open at all. What's that? The whole event took place in a pretty thick area. Yeah, it was, uh, it was really fast. From what we heard, they thought it was in this drainage right here where the full road goes through. I, I walked above it and we went through it. And, uh, never did see her. Where's she at, Moose? Oh, that'd be so cool if you found her. Man, it's so crazy picture here. Just so you know, I left my bucket and pick her down where it originally happened. At one point, yeah. we'll have to get back there. Find it. Not like it'd be super easy to find a dead bear in among here because it's pretty thick with brush and huckleberry bushes and everything else. We've been going through thick stuff like this all day, picking and getting to our picking spot. They don't exactly have manicured trails to the good huckleberries. Yeah, those are some nice big berries. Like right on the other side, there's a little dip here, and then it opens up into another little knoll. Ah. Is where we were at, and it sounded like about right here was was, was dead silence. Eerie silence. Maybe the night that the lights went off in Georgia, right about here. Where's she at, Moose? Where it disappeared. Yeah. It wouldn't have been any further than here. Mm -hmm. I got over here. Yeah, he couldn't follow the blood trail for a while. 
Where's she at, bud? Oh, he's close to me. Oh, Look at how that grizzly ripped those stumps up. The one that charged me, it was ripping up a stump full of ants. They're nervous when my dog runs at me in this stretch. I know it. Well, Josh and I have been picking and looking for the bear and doing our thing here in this soaking rain for, what What do you think, maybe six hours now? Two o'clock. Two o'clock, we started at, yeah, 7.45. And many times we've been going through this kind of stuff that he's going through right now. Where you, and it was actually very thick where he had the bear encounter as you saw too. And this dog has been a whale of a pooch, man. He's amazing. I'm sure he got that shot off like I did. You clock Moose at 27. Yeah, I clock, I've clocked Moose at 27 right next to the truck, or car. And he was probably going faster than that. And she was going a good that. bit faster than Moose, so you'd guess she was probably booking in at, what, 35 or something? Yeah, that girl was going over the speed limit in this area. Uh, but the minute she saw you, it just... She changed her target. The minute she saw me, she leaped yeah. into a murder kill, murder bear. Was she making frothing noises as she was closing in on you, or just... It just sounded like a freight train was coming. Jeez. Uh, it just sounded like... It's hard to... Uh, I don't even know. It was, it was crazy. I mean, it sounded like moose coming through the woods. Only like five of them. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little faster. It's amazing how, how you were so steady afterwards. I couldn't believe it when I stuck my hand up. I'm like, woo! You know, and I'm pumped. I'm yelling at her. I'm trying to get her to, I'm trying to provoke her now. You know, I'm throwing stuff down there. Yeah, uh, trying to finish it off. I was dying for her to charge me again, you know, because we were going to light her up. I knew if I got one more shot off and he's shooting 10 rounds at her, yeah, she wouldn't have got back to us. Yeah. But I, my biggest concern was, because uh, of her size, was if she still with her mom. Oh, because she wasn't that giant, so you were thinking maybe grandma might be around. Yeah, because I've, I've seen that on on uh, documentaries about bears and stuff. Oh. Uh, about to where their uh, mom will have a cub and then the cub won't be quite out of her world and that cub will have a cub. Okay. Yeah, because like you mentioned, she wasn't a huge bear. And it could have been that, could have been a 550 pound one, not that far away. That's what I was like, when I seen her, when I seen that cub, I'm like, and after it all got quiet, you know, I was like, oh man, I hope that was just her. And then I thought they got the dog, you know, because he never came back. He yeah, this is Navy SEAL stuff right here, man. We've been, I have good rain gear that is hard to get wet. And I've been soaked to the bone for at least four hours coming down through that deep brush. This is pretty hardcore stuff, man. Josh said he was not at all afraid to report the incident to the authorities because he had three witnesses 
that the bear was trying to end his life. But I know he wanted me to go up there with him and number one, get the story, and number two, look for a bear's carcass before he reported it to the authorities. Because it was 3.7 miles from any trail, and he's just living a peaceful life of camping and picking huckleberries, and he didn't really want all the commotion of a report unless he had to. So I think he wanted to see if he and I could find a wounded grizzly or the carcass first. We were going up to this awesome huckleberry patch. The, the berry gods were fighting me for three days getting up there. It was the third day trying to get five, four miles up this road. Uh, we bushwhacked up there, wound up staying the night on the top of this mountain, which has got some incredible huckleberries. Uh, eight piles of bear scat on the way up the road. Uh, I know there's bears there. Never really been scared of the bears. I'm from Libby. Uh, Montana and I know one time I inter interviewed you that you said the bears are scared of you yeah 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 not this one not this one let me tell you and uh whatever you thought about a grizzly bear magnify that by like a hundred and it wouldn't even be close uh so we get all the way up to the top and we're a hundred yards from what I've been trying to see I seen it four years ago and the ground was purple Wow. Uh, it was amazing. There were still some bushes there that were just loaded, and I've just been dying to get back since then. These berries are sacred, I think. Uh, so we get all the way up there to the top, almost to the bowl, and all of a sudden, one of my dogs start. There's a group of four, two guys, two girls. Uh, my dogs start barking. Uh, my dog doesn't bark unless something's going on. As soon as I heard him bark, I knew something was bad. Uh, that's moose right there, yeah, right? Yeah, that's moose right there. He's four-year-old chocolate lab. Highly recommend. He's four now. Uh, he got scared too, though. So uh, I bust down on the road to where I could see up where the dogs were because it sounded like they were getting whooped up by something, you know. And I was like, "Come on, man, we got to go get our dogs." And we run up, and all of a sudden, here comes my little seven-month-old dog. He's a pretty good-sized boy, and he's kind of mean and ornery, you know. Uh, he ain't really scared of anything. And I didn't think he was that fast, but he came blazing past me like as fast as you could ever see a dog run. And then a couple seconds later, these other two little dogs, I don't blame them for running either, blazed past me and my, I hear my dog up in the front growling, barking. I knew it was bad. I knew it was bad. I think this whole thing went down in like 30 seconds. Uh, it might not have even been 30 seconds. I'm not sure. It was fast, faster than you would ever imagine. All of a sudden, I look at down where the U-brush is growing up, and there's a little tunnel in the middle. You guys know what I'm talking about if you spent your time in the woods here. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've made, bow, I've made bows out of that U-brush. Those of you, they make good bows. Yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, here comes Moose, my, my dog there. And, uh, and he's, he can run 27 miles an hour next to the car. He was running about 32, I'd say. Wow. And 20, 20 yards behind him came the, I don't know, I'd say it was 250 pound Grizz, Grizz, mom. I, I, I didn't know, it, it was a mom at that time, you know? Yeah. Uh, it was just 250 pound Grizz. I'd say she was going about 40, because she wow. was gaining on moose. Like, I'm watching the distance get, she wouldn't have caught him, because he's got, he can run 40 miles right now. Like, yeah. he's amazing. Uh, uh, she wouldn't have caught him. So yeah, you think he he, you, you think he could have outrun her, huh? She would run out of steam before she caught him. Oh, sure. you're the fast uh, uh, star of the show, huh? Look at you. <laughs> so anyway, and he really ain't scared of anything, you know. He, yeah. He, he, uh, I've watched him catch grouse and rabbits, and he's spent a lot of, a lot of time in the mountains. Yeah. Uh, but he ain't never seen He's treed black bears. Yeah, wow, uh, he's treed them. He's treed some black bears. You know, we'll see a black bear, and we'll get out of the truck and run at it. Me and him while in the tree. Uh -huh. It's a lot of fun. Try it sometimes. No, don't. Uh, <laughs> I had my gun in my hand. 44 mag, super black hawk. Same I, as I shoot, by the way. Uh, Just a little longer barrel. I would be severely, I'd be in the hospital still or dead if I wouldn't for this gun right here and the hollow point bullet. Uh, Moose is coming in. He blazes past me. And this bear's like, Right there, and yeah. and as soon as the bear seen me, 
it changed its target from the dog to me and it quit running. It's not running anymore. It's flying through the air. Like <laughs> oh my X -Men God. character Wolverine <laughs> with his claws like fully wrecked. And I'm like, oh, crap. So I only had four rounds in there. So I had two empty ones. I know I pulled the trigger when that bear was coming at me and uh, she was coming at me fast, you know, but I know I, when my dog got out of the way, I pulled the trigger. It didn't, it didn't shoot because there wasn't a bullet there. Uh, oh, because you uh, only had four rounds, you told I had me earlier. It on the next bullet, you know. I oh, four man. rounds, that's enough, right? The big <laughs> bears don't mess with you, you know, not when you're making a bunch of noise and you got a bunch of dogs with you, right? No, not right. <laughs> Wrong. Mm. Uh, so, uh, this thing's like right here at my face coming right at me like a rocket. And I pull some kind of move and go back and land sideways on my backpack. Wow. And, uh, and I had the gun in my hand. And I, as soon as I hit the ground, I like look back to trail because I don't know, I've seen th one, two and three generation bears. Like mama still have her one year old or two year old and have a cub. Uh, especially females, you know. Uh, I looked down the trail where she came from because she went right over me. Full claws erect, like she was coming from my head and I somehow got out of the way by the grace of God. Uh, and he definitely had something to do with it. Yeah. Thank you, God. Uh, got chills. So the bear went straight over me and... And I thought I watched it like blow over the hill. I think it hit some of the U brush in the road or a tree and shoot over the side of the gator, the road we were on. Then uh, I, and I look back to trail as I'm laying on the ground, getting ready to get up. And I'm like, oh, cute. And I hear, I hear commotion going on this way. And I'm like, this all happened in like, like I said, all happened in 30 seconds. I hear commotion and I'm like, oh crap, that bear just got past me. I got three people behind me, you know. One's got a nine millimeter, one's got a bear spray. The other one doesn't have anything, a knife. Uh, that'll never happen again. I turn back to where these guys are and, it, and I raise my gun up because I hear something coming. I don't even know how it went about if I just got super, super lucky if my gun would have been right here, 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 or anywhere else from where I raised it up because I said, oh, cute bear, cute baby. And I looked over and boom, because coming over eight, seven or eight feet on the side of the hill of the gated road of the embankment, this bear was already coming back over the hill just as fast as she was coming down the road straight at my face. I mean, she's like, whoa, claws erect mouth uh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, and I pulled the trigger on that gun this 44 Super Black Hawk mag and that bear disappeared it wow. this gun blew that bear back off the road like literally the bear was four feet from me when I pulled the trigger that wasn't including my hand and gun so I might have been in the bear you know I don't know where I hit the bear at but I know I hit her because I found blood and uh, she re uh, instantly, Moose was right by my side. Uh, and, uh, and I'm like, I got her, bud. And I th he smelled blood right away. He knows what a gun is. He's been with me hunting elk. We killed elk, deer. Like the week I got him, we shot a deer and he found it for me. So oh, he knows cool. when that gun goes off, he starts like yeah. smelling. That's why he ran at me because he's like, oh crap, dad, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Shoot this guy, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and instantly Jeez. he barreled over the hill and I'm like, no, I, I tried to stop him, but, but, uh, cause I didn't want him going down there and messing with her, especially if she's wounded. Cause I don't want my boy hurt. Cause he's like one of my kids. Yeah. And, uh, uh, uh I get up, regroup with my, my people, you know, we're just standing in the middle of this road and I can hear her up there. And, uh, she sounded like she was going to charge again. I think she did try to charge again. And, uh, and uh, me, and, me and the guy I was with, I mean, we're like standing in the trail. We're ready, you know, and then yeah. she back, back off and there's a bunch of commotion going on. And I thought I heard like 
a squawk of one of my dogs, you know, because the three disappeared. Yeah. The moose is there, like, blazing in front of me, you know, and running down in the woods. And then uh, all of a sudden, I thought, I was like, oh, crap, they got my dog. And uh, I knew I hit her. I just didn't know where, so I didn't know, and I didn't know if she was alone yet, which was scarier than her. So I, like, raced up the trail, and I see her scrummaging around behind this tree about that big around. And uh, something was going on behind that tree. Uh, I thought she might have had my dog. And I was trying to get another shot, but I just couldn't get a shot. And I knew I only had, I thought I only had a couple rounds left, but I had three. The other guy was a little nine millimeter. I would have had him like, go ahead, shoot her, you know. I mean, you can waste some of those bullets. Uh, but we uh, backed up. It backed up because she kind of went over the hill a little bit. So we backed up and and got a little higher stance in an open spot to where we we took our stand up against this tree, to where we got we got good and can come in right behind us because of this tree and we got 20 yards all the way around us, and I'm I can I can hear her down there like she's not happy. She is uh, I think she I think she ate her cup behind that tree. That's I wild. Maybe she, in shock, just I think just in knowing shock, that she might die, just up on her. Oh, that's crazy! Something happened at this tree because there was a blood slick this wide for twenty feet. I mean, there was blood all over the place. I actually got a huckleberry bush with blood all over it, and it's a fuck baggie back at my camp. It's one of my souvenirs from this uh, ordeal. Uh, so, so we back up, and I'm up on the mountain, and. And I'm just like screaming at this bear because she's like sounding like she's gonna charge. And I'm like, come on, come on. You know, I'm just screaming at her to charge. I wanted her to charge back now, you know, because this bear's gotta die. Yeah. Because so she's wounded. a man eater. I mean, she was coming, she was defending her cub, but she was fixing to wipe us out. And she was a man eater. I know she was. Mm. She was gonna eat me. And she, she was coming from my head right now. But. They scrummaged around, and I thought she was going to charge back a couple times. It kept getting louder and louder, and they went in this little drainage right in front of me. The bear did, and uh, and within 50 yards, 70 yards of where all this went down, uh, all of a sudden there was dead silence. There wasn't a bird chirping, wouldn't squirrel on the thing. The cell phone alarm wasn't going off. Uh, there was no nothing dead silence and uh i can hear the dogs and people breathing you know uh but nothing from the bear or her cub and i we i was like man we got to follow this blood trail and and uh and make sure that this is gone you know or not coming back on us or whatever you know and we tried to and it started to get thick and and uh those everybody else was pretty hysterical so was i actually was shaking less than I am right now. Yeah. After it was all said and done, I was like, hey, look, guys. And I held my hand out, and it was, I couldn't believe it. I don't know how it was, but it was just calm. Yeah, perfectly said. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, quite the rush. So I wish I would have had a bear spray on me. Uh, I know Don Houck bear sprayed himself three times. Bear just sprayed himself. Woods, <laughs> just from walking through the woods with it on his pack. Uh, yeah. Know, it catches on a tree. I've, I've, I've sprayed myself once. It's nasty I, stuff, I man. Because I don't like bear spray, but I'm going to get like a, I don't know, a pocket protector from a bear spray, you know, that I can like break glass for emergency or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do about the bear spray, but I got to have a bear spray. I'll never go into woods again without my gun. I walk around at camp now. I'm sure I'll get over that one day, maybe. Uh, but... I was just behind my truck, uh, grabbing something out of the back of my truck, and I'm like, why am I in the woods behind my truck without my gun right now? Yeah, that's something. And uh, the, uh, Moose did patrols, and he was amazing. He, uh, for the rest of the day, he was within 50, 70 yards of us, and then back and forth. And Good dog, uh, huh? Yeah, he was amazing. Uh, I'm glad he didn't get hurt. The, the other two dogs came back 30 minutes later. They were scared to death. You know, They were like, come up to us on the ground. Uh, the other dog is seven months old. We get back to our camp because we stayed the night up there. She wasn't there. The little puppy wasn't there. And I was like, oh man, did that bear get my dog, you know, or she just lost up there? Like we were getting ready to go gear back up at camp and go back up there and look for my dog because I love my dogs, you know, and that little puppy, he was just a puppy. So we get back to camp down there, seven miles down the road. And uh, 
maybe eight from here, seven or eight, from the top of the mountain. It's got to be a good seven or eight miles. And uh, all of a sudden, here come out of the tent, the little puppy. Oh, uh, there come he, the puppy. He made, it, he made it back to camp somehow. He found his way back to camp by wow, he's, he's seven, by himself. Him later on. He's seven months old. And I don't blame him one bit, because if I could have ran that fast, I would have ran right past him on the three people that <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so how many cubs did you evidently see? I seen one. Just seen one? Just one. And she was, I don't know, I was laying there on the ground sideways after this bear came over me. And I like looked back in the road, and I was like, oh, pretty. Or, oh, cute, you know. I'm like, oh, cute. Uh, but she was probably this tall. She yeah. was tiny. And I thought that was weird because it's late. I mean, it's, it's gonna, it was, should have snowed here this morning probably. Yeah, this year's cub. It's 50 degrees right now, and it's a little nippy. Well, these uh, cubs I ran into with that sow in Glacier Park on June 5th, they were beautiful, they were big, big cubs. They were last year's cubs. They were last year's, huh? Yeah. It's been raining so hard that the rivers are all look like flood water. I just got off of about a seven hour hike with my buddy Josh in the pouring rain and the cold and also investigating a, a grizzly incident. And look at this beautiful bush that I picked today. <laughs> 